Dennis Hansen, the designer, builder, and tester for Woody Logic surfboards. And I'm going to show you how you can build your own wood surfboard in a small space with the minimum amount of tools and have a lot of fun doing it. As a surfer, I've learned what works best for me. And there's a couple ways you can get your design. There's the computer designed boards. And they come in a lot of different varieties, types, and you're able to modify and customize the dimensions to whatever suits your needs. The other way, and the way I prefer, is to build boards that are built from their copies, basically, and I build them from boards that I'm familiar with. For this particular project, I've selected a seven foot fun board that I really had a lot of, I've enjoyed riding it. And my, the board that I built is a seven foot, exactly like it, except I did change the uh, fin setup. But whatever way you choose, main thing is find something that, that's going to work for you and go with that. In this video, I'll be using my copy board to create full-size drawings so that I can make patterns to create my wood board. <clears throat> now, if you already have your ribs and your spar and all the other parts that you need, computer-generated parts, then you're probably going to want to skip ahead to my next video which will, where I'll be covering cutting out the ribs, cleaning them up, making bottom panels, making the cradle and such. But the techniques will be, you know, that part will be covered in the next video. But for this video I want to concentrate on showing people how they can take their own board and make a full-size drawing of it to make their copy. I got the copy board out today. I wanted to get the wax off it and I thought this would be a good opportunity to, to show you how this board looks, how it's the shape of it, and compare it to the board that I've already made. So as you can see, it's the rails are pretty soft on this board. Nice clean lines. It's got a fair amount of rocker. got the three pin set up and it's just a pretty nice board all around real fun stripped off the wax and the reason you have to do that is because we're gonna have to apply tape to the top and bottom for markers so we can use that for our measurements and uh, I did that just use a scraper a little uh, goo gone usually does a trick. This is the hollow wood board I built from the copy. Um, same rocker, same rails, rails are a lot harder in the tail of course. Did a quad set up on this. I prefer quads myself. Um, you could build this board as a single. I don't know about a double, but single three fins or a quad setup seems to work pretty well. This board, I used balsa wood and polonia. And with that, I was able to achieve the same weight as I had with copy board. I'm um, pretty happy about that. I've had this board out many times. It's a lot of fun. Um, if you care to see the build on this, I did it a couple years ago. It's on my Woody Logic surfboards blog. And it's a seven foot fun board. I go through the whole build on that. But of course I'm going to do it. I'm going to build another one of these. And, and my next one 
It's going to be identical to that one. In fact, I'm going to do a three fin. So this is what's possible. All it does, it takes, takes some time. Um, you can't rush these projects. It's going to cost a little money, but in the long run, you're going to have something that's uh, very nice, something you'll enjoy for many years. So today, we're going to start to make the first pattern uh, template of the copy board, and that's what I used to make the bottom panel. Um, as you can see, my shop's pretty simple. This is an exterior door. I built some extensions on it so it would uh, accommodate the seven-foot door. And uh, covered I, this uh, contractor's paper. I use it all the time. It's the best thing uh, for drawing on, for just covering stuff up. All right, so the first step, what I'm going to want to do is put a center line down this piece of paper. And I've already found the middle of the bench, so I'm just going to mark it. That's done. Okay, my next step, grab my copy board. I want this one, let's see. Yeah, I'll do the nose up here. So I'm gonna lay the stringer right on that center line. As close as I can get to it. And if you got a couple pads handy, that helps too. It keeps the board from wobbling around so much. And it's not really critical that you get this 100% right because <clears throat> you're going to make the bottom panel. You want it to be a little bigger than, you know, you need some room for, uh, you need some margin there. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to copy it like this. I just keep the pencil straight down, try not to move the board. Like I said, this one doesn't have to be perfect. The next one I'm going to do, need a little more precision, but I'll show you how to get around that. Okay, to do the nose, I just kind of work it the best I can. And I'll push down on the nose a little bit. Just make sure the big thing is to keep your pencil vertical. And that's all there is to that. Now in the next video, in this next segment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we're going to develop our working drawing so we can develop the ribs and make the cradle. So this is how the outline came out. Uh, pretty symmetrical. I would say it's good enough for a bottom panel. Um, might be hard to see this camera, but you get the idea. All right, I set the bench up to do the second drawing. And what I did, I laid down another layer of uh, contractor's paper. And I found the center line just by measuring from one end, edge of the bench in. And you have a nice long ruler that helps. And what you want to do is we're going to draw another center line. And 
And we're in this working drawing, we're going to do a top view and a side view. And the reason we do that, of course, the top view is the outline of the board. And the side view is going to be the rocker. All right, so that's set up. For this, uh, this part of the what we're going to do is we're going to do the uh, top view first. So I'm going to bring the board back up here. And just so we keep everything symmetrical, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take half of the board. I'm going to line up the stringer on the center line. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trace the outline of just the half because we know the other half is going to, should be a mirror image of it unless we're building something uh, different. So get your two center lines matched up the best you can. Now here again on this one, it's not super critical that you get the nose and tail because those are going to be built out and what I'm going to do later is I'm going to make patterns for those from this board, but they'll be specific because what happens is we'll do the ribs and the uh, nose and tail are built out later. They're not part of the basic um, when we do the, uh, the frame to the bottom. That's not built out at all. So, All right, all you're going to want to do is trace it, keep the pencil nice and vertical. Same thing for the nose. Now, if you do want to modify your, you know, you don't want to build an exact copy, this would be the good time to figure out if you want to pull in the nose and you could actually shift the board in slightly, or say if you wanted to make a wider tail, push the tail out a little bit. This is going to be your basic outline to design your ribs. So that's done. Next step I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to develop the outline of the, the rocker. All right, so to get the outline of the rocker, I'm going to need to use a few more tools. What I've done, if you remember from the last time, I drew the center line, got the outline of the board. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw a line that's parallel to the center line. It's two inches up from that. That's going to be my working line for the board rocker. And it's needs to be the same length as the board, of course. reference line. Now one thing I did before I uh, <clears throat> set this part up is that I put the tape on the board for my markers. And what, all you got to do is you just run masking tape right down the stringer, try to keep it in the center, all the way front back, top, bottom, everything. Okay, the next thing I did after that is I know that my first 
rib is going to be six inches from the tail. Generally, on this board, it worked out perfect that it was six and six. So the first rib would actually it's the thirteenth rib. But usually, what I'll do is I'll start measuring from the tail. So measure six inches, make a mark. Six inches, make a mark, make a mark, make a mark, all the way to the to within six inches of the nose. Same thing on the other side. Okay, and the way this is going to work out is this is going to be rib one. It's going to go across here, rib two, three, four, and so on. Thirteen ribs in this board. The reason that I like to space my ribs at six inches is because I am using balsa and polonia, and it's not as stable, it's not as strong as maybe cedar or pine. But um, I find that uh, you know it works good with all the stringers that I run and things like that. Okay, so my next thing, put that down for a second. And what I've done, and I would recommend that you do this too, is just build yourself some cheap little uh, one by three glassing racks. And I'm gonna use those right now to help me set to do this rock on the rocker. What I do is I have it center lined right here. So I want to put this right on the center line of the outline drawing I did. Same with this. And I don't know, I guess they're, this one's probably like 16, 18 inches from the end. That was maybe 24. Then I want to go ahead and I want to put my board up there and I want to make sure I center the board because I'm not really screwing these things down and I don't want it to be too wobbly. Now this part is where I grab, it's real nice if you've got, uh, I just have lumber around here. So I did two by four, this one's pretty straight, it's real straight. So that's what I'm going to use as my reference line. So I'm going to put this thing right on the tape. It's going to extend both, you know, it's long enough for the front and back. Okay, and this gives you a good idea how much rocker there is in the board. So this board has a lot of rocker. That's why I like it. It's fun. Okay, my next step, and I probably should have done this before, but I'm gonna, I can do it now, is the line, the one inch line that I drew, or the two, in, two inches that was offset from the center line of the board. Every six inches I'm going to draw. I'm going to make a mark. And the only trouble, uh, let's see, I don't know if this one, I'm actually going to have to have, uh, let's see, Sometimes you have to move these things a little bit, move the racks around a little bit, but what we'll do is I'll take all the measurements that I need and then uh, we'll come back and fix that part. All right, so I've got all my, those things laid out. So I've got R1 and R2 all the way and such. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna measure what's the displacement from my reference line. 
I do it a pretty simple way. Get one of these skewer sticks. Now on this, I, I'm going to want to know it exactly from the tail and from the nose too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it right on the tail and make sure it's vertical. Make a little mark. It's right there. Okay. Or it's probably easier just to measure. This one's pretty big. So that's got 2 and 13 sixteenths. And I just write it on there. I'm not going to draw all that yet. I'll show you how we can do that. And so on. You're going to go through the, every place where there's a rib or the nose of the tail. Come here. Make sure you level. Mark it. Measure it. That one's two and one sixteenth. And I'm sure you get the idea. You just go through the whole thing. And maybe what I'll do is I'll put that on time lapse. This is where I know the ribs, where I've laid out my six inch increments and the nose and the tail of the board. Then I'm going to take that offset and I'm going to make the mark there so I know how much rocker to put in. So the nose rocker was five inches, the tail was two and uh, two and thirteen sixteenths, so it's quite a bit of rocker in this board. I also did an intermediate point in the nose because it's nice to have that just to, so you know where the curve, where that lip is. Um, it's nice to be able to put that in there. So all you gotta do is, like I say, we're gonna come back. Um, I'm gonna draw these lines now, and then what I'll do is I'll get the camera, bring it over here, give you a chance to see what I'm doing exactly, maybe to make a little bit more sense. Now you're getting an idea, you're looking at the, this is the tail of the board down here, and you can see the marks that I've made. What I've done is, that's the rocker, that's how much the way it goes. And I'm going to draw that in in a few minutes, but the before I do that, I want to get the thickness of the board, and it's kind of the same. I'll show you this process coming up. Okay, I've got the uh, board back on the racks, and the next thing I want to do is I want to measure the thickness of each rib. That way I know, you know, I can get my top line for the uh, side view drawing. So, I happen to have these. I got these uh, a long time ago. Um, I've seen people make them out of uh, plywood. So you're going to need to figure out some way that you can get in there and measure how thick something is in the middle of the board. So I'm going to do the nose. Start here. Simplest way is just to put the calipers on there and go ahead measure with the ruler. And then I'm going to write it on there. My intermediate spot, I'm going to just do that because I want, it's nice to know how thick that is too. All this is built out later, but I like to have it on my plans. That way it's, if you ever look back at it, kind of know what was going on. 
And for the rest of this, I'll put it in, um, I'll put it in time lapse. But I'm going to go through all these, measure them, write it down, and then I'll do the offset. So what I've done is I've placed the offsets for the thickness of the board and you can see it like here in the nose, five inches of rocker, it's a half inch thick. This is the intermediate spot. It's, uh, I think it's an inch and a quarter. Oh no, that's two inches. And then the uh, R1 is an inch and uh, a quarter. Going back to R2, it's one and three quarters and so on. And then what I did is, you know, like in a working drawing, you use the other parts of the drawing to help you build the whole thing. They should all interconnect so you can see the outline. And that's gonna be rib one, rib two, rib three. Now, these ribs aren't gonna be that long they're going to be shorter because there's I do rail strips so I pull them in three quarters of an inch but uh, actually I pull them in an inch because I do three uh, quarter inch rail strips and then I do a, a cedar but you can see that this is how the working drawing progresses and for the next part I'll do it on time lapse I'm going to draw the curve of the rocker in there and to do that I have a little trick that I do and I'll share that with you. Alright so what I did is I took a piece of quarter by quarter inch cedar and I kind of do it like a French curve. It's a long piece, it's a, it's a seven foot piece of cedar so it bends pretty good and what I did is I just, what I'd done before, I took the thickness, like at R7, it's, it's touching the reference line. So that's I'm kind of working um, rocker from this way and that way. But you can see the thickness, see how it tapers out. There's the tail. Get a little idea. This is the way I do it. Now I'm not done by any means. Um, there's still a lot to do, but you can also see I've got the lines for the for the ribs here. This is R1, R2, and I write these on the plan. So it's it's pretty pretty simple process, really. The next thing I'm going to do is I need to measure off. Um, how far back I'm going to go from the outside of the board to do my ribs and I'll draw that on there that way I'll know my how long each rib is and I'll measure that out so I can develop the ribs and the last thing I need to do is on the edge of the board I have to um, use a contour gauge and so I get the right rail thickness um, helps me get the profile for the rib. So that's going to come up next. Alright, I've gone ahead and I've marked off one inch from the edge of the board. So I know this rib, R1, is going to be 5 and 7 sixteenths long. R2, 7 and a half. Come back here, R3, 8 and a half. R4, 9, and 3 sixteenths, and so on and so on. So that's how I get my rib length. Now, I'm sure there's some people who are going, I am not so sure about all this. I can tell you that what happens is I'll take a piece of cedar and I will, it all be trued up before it's the board is 
if there's any adjustments need to be made, I can make adjustments at another point. But I feel pretty confident with these. And um, I'm going to show you the last step in this before we can uh, go ahead and make the rib profiles. The last measurement we need to get off the copy board is the thickness at the rail. That way, actually it's not the thickness at the rail, it's the thickness one inch in from the rail. And that way I know how thick, or how high the rib's going to be at the end. The way I do that is I take a contour gauge and I've got a, a line at one inch and I'll push this into the rib until it hits exactly the one inch. Then I would measure the distance across here and I'll know how thick that should be. So I'm going to do it just once here to show you real quick and then I'll do it in time lapse because it's, it's not that you know, difficult of a process. So this would be R1, and I just want to line it up on my mark. Hold everything pretty tight around there. You want to get the contour gauge so that line is just coming even. I went a little too far that time. Right even there. And then I would measure this distance here. And that's what's going to give me the the height at the end of that rib. Now, you also have to consider that I'm going to have to take off of a half of an inch off of this because of the thickness of the, the bottom panel and the top panel. And I'll get to that later, but for now, I um, need to go through, do the whole board, and then I'll show you the next step. Now we have all the information we need to develop the ribs. And I'm just going to run through this again, maybe uh, make it a little bit easier for you. For example, if I was to take rib 7, and I'm going to show you that right now. Um, this is rib 7. I need to know the thickness here. I need to know the distance from here to here. That's from the center line to within one inch of the outside of the board. And I need to know the distance at the end of the board, at that one inch mark, that height for the rib. So what I did is I went through and I calculated all this stuff and this is it. Hopefully you can see that. So at R1 it's, uh, it's 5 and 7 sixteenths long, rib height is 5 eighths and at the end of the rib it's 9 sixteenths. The way I did that like I say, I measured, this is rib one, that would be, this is the height, this is the length, and this is going to be the height at the end of the rib. Now there's a couple things that you should know that I probably didn't explain very well, but these distances for the height of the rib, I'm going to have to take out a half inch. And the reason for that is because the board's got a quarter inch material on the top and the bottom. Top skin's quarter inch, bottom skin's a quarter inch. 
And if I didn't do that, then, you know, the board would be way too thick. So you have to do that for the thickness at the center line where it's from the side view and also at the end. So I just kind of come up with the chart at R1, R2, R3, what it should be. These would be the lengths. This would be the height at the end, and this would be the height at the center line. So I hope that makes sense. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw. I'll just do R7 because it's kind of a, it's more of a, a regular rib. The first and last ribs, I don't notch them because I'm going to bucket those stringers in there. And so I use a little bit different technique, but if you follow what I'm doing, you'll be able to, to make all your own ribs. And the other thing is too, if you get really stuck, you're interested in a seven foot fun board, I'm sure I can send you this stuff. It's not a big deal. So let's make our first rib. Okay, to make our seven, I'm gonna look to my, my sheet here. And I know that the rib height, our seven is two and three eighths. And that's after I've already taken the half inch out. So come over here, two and three eighths. It's going to be here. Two and three eighths here. That's at the end. R7. I know that the length that we measured out from the center line is nine and five eighths. Nine and five eighths. And the height at the end of the rib is one inch. That's nice and easy. By the way, I should mention this is quarter inch graph paper. Makes it way easier to do this much quicker. So I'm going to use my handy, we call this a variable form rule. And I got this, I believe, on Amazon. Real handy tool for when you're doing your, your ribs. What I want to do is I know that it's going to be flat up here. I want the deck, you know, to be pretty flat. And I usually come to like five and a quarter to start. And I'm going to aim for a spot right there. And then I just carry it through, just move it, just like you're doing a French curve. Nice thing about this is it's, it's real nice and tight here. So you can make marks on it. And that would be that would be the first rib, or that'd be rib R7. Now there's a couple things. I do I do notches, I'm gonna run stringers, so I come back here at the very bottom, quarter by quarter. I'm gonna notch that out. I'm actually gonna have a stringer that's half inch by a quarter, but remember this is half of a rib. And then I'm gonna come in here, and this is about right in the middle, so I'm gonna come over here. And this is going to be another notch. Then I'm going to come over four inches from the center line, and I'm going to have another one. Because this is going to have another stringer right here and right here. Now there are stringers that go on the outside perimeter. I'm not going to draw those on, obviously, but I put a tab, and then those get put on later. So I'm going to draw a few more ribs in, uh, in time lapse, and you can kind of see how that goes.
So I've got all my ribs drawn, got all the uh, measurements that I needed. All the ribs are here. And well, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to end this video and I will be back in, in a few days, maybe a week, and finish it up with cutting out the uh, paper patterns, sticking them to the Luan, going ahead and cutting those out on the bandsaw. Still a lot of work to do. I hope you're enjoying the video. I know I'm having fun making it. So I'll see you next time.